I'm Gary Lyder. Welcome to Access All Areas. The Sydney Swans machine just keeps rolling on. They've now won nine of their last ten and are steaming towards the top four berth. This is turning into a remarkable story, Damien Barrett and Matthew Lloyd. It is, Damo and uh, Gaz. And you would have thought it would have taken them all year to scrounge into the finals. But uh, amazingly, after 17 rounds, with so much inconsistency across the competition, they're now in the top six. And only a matter of time before they're in the top four. Whatever they said as a, as a footy club, and they've denied it being a crisis meeting, but clearly there was a significant coming together, wasn't there, after that round six loss, after Callum Mills had mm. been roughed up by Carlton. And then to lose only one game from that moment uh, by six points only in, in a game they should have beaten Hawthorne in, to, to now be challenging for this flag is extraordinary. And it, it's every bit the fairy tale that the Western Bulldogs was last year, as it emerges. It is. And look, let's be honest, they should never have been 0-6. Mm. So a much better side than that. But to do what they've been able to do is a credit to them. Their pressure was outstanding. And I guess on the other hand, that their Sydney cousins or Sydney younger brother have learned a lesson. I mean, we know what Buddy was capable of doing. And that is, that's just pure footy there. That's going to be a contender for goal of the week, I'm calling it. Mm. But um, their younger brother need to take a leaf out of their book. And that is that they've got to have gears in terms of the way they play. It just can't all be flashy. It can't all be quick-paced and you know, free-flowing. Sometimes you've got to dig your, your heels in and get your hands dirty. And the Swans, uh, they just did it better. Yeah. Just on that, it's a good point because I think it was 13 goals the Swans scored from turnovers. And it was a difference in the game. Maybe they're running too far forward, as you say, and not defending well enough. Are they just too demoralised, Lord, over the uh, run of injuries that they've clearly stricken them? Yeah. Or is it more to it than that? I think it has crippled them. I think that uh, they'd be the top side on the ladder had they not had that so much uh, poor run with injuries, but their last five weeks, Damo, two losses, two draws, and mm. one win. So they go to the MCG this Saturday. I think it's a statement game. If mm. they're to win the flag, they need to win, beat Richmond on the MCG. Yeah. Just back on the Swans, too, guys. Yeah. Uh, with the, 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 the string of wins they've had to get just to get to this position, does that come and catch up with them at some stage? Potentially, nine out of ten. I mean, that, that winning streak is, we see four of these in this mm. modern era as being a pretty good mm. result. So whether it takes some out of them at the back end remains to be seen, but it's interesting and fascinating to see nevertheless. Hey, let's talk about uh, the derby or derby mm. over in Western Australia. Whether you saw this or not late, this was late last night, of course, the twilight game, they had every chance for him, Alan. Mm. You just need to watch this package here to see. And take nothing away. The Eagles got the job done, and people can think they were hard on them, but good on them. But, gee, they had some chances to stop us. Yeah, after quarter time, they were by far and away the better side for mine. They had 11 more inside 50s, but their kicking efficiency was just 57%. Look at some of these sitters. You need to put scoreboard pressure on. I know West Coast jumped out of the blocks, but... They were the better side. These are their better kicks too. Uh, right? Yeah, so Walters, you know, he was a good Hill. player again. Hill, Lockie Neal, he, he butchered three or four balls. So it was disappointing. And I think the time has come for mine. I think a lot of this comes about because they don't have anyone to straighten them up. I know they're yeah. missing some bad balls here, but I think you need a presence up forward. Right. I think Nathan Fife needs to be that player that we saw Dangerfield become mm. because of his injury last on the weekend. Does that rob the yeah, midfield? Right. <laughs> By the way, old Rossi Lyon knocking his coke over. Rocky's not happy, <laughs> but I don't think Rocky's going to come back too much. Yeah. So you reckon he should go forward, forward. And, and gives midfield opportunities to younger players yeah. in the meantime? I think it does. I think that uh, their, their midfield is OK. I think it's quite strong. I just think their forward line with Shane Kirsten, McCarthy, who's back this week, they're not strong power players, but five years, I think I'd love to see that happen. Maybe 80% forward, 20% midfield. Yep. Hey, Bernie Vince has got himself uh, again in match review panel consideration for two incidents. We'll take a look at the first one here on Eddie Betts, off the ball. Clearly, when you see the reverse angle of this too, th there is an elbow toward right. the face area, and it does jolt. So Why whether it's considered that? serious enough force, I don't know, but he's in trouble here. And this is the other one. I reckon he gets Douglas here in the shoulder more so than the head, and I reckon he might be OK on that one. Well, I hope for his sake he, he has, because... Um, why would you do that? Why would you do what you did with Eddie Betts? Yep. And on that one, you might be right. Douglas may have over-exaggerated that. But the simple fact is that it's been on the agenda. The record hasn't been great. The senior players have been letting them down. Goodwin's talked about it publicly and you go out and do it again. So he'd be really angry, would he, with what Filthy. he dished up? And to the stage where his spot in the team would have to be in threat, Bernie. Really? In, Even in if he doesn't get a match review panel sanction? Oh, it. You can't keep talking about, you know, this is not what we want to stand for, this is not what we want, and yeah. we see something silly like that from Bernie. Do you subscribe to uh, that? Too? Oh, well, they're just in desperate need of midfielders, Damo. Yeah. So they've lost Nathan Jones and Bernie Vince. Well, that's the other point. Sorry, and, no, uh, Viney. and Viney, Viney, sorry. So to lose him, Tom that Tyson, not a shocking playing. act. Yeah. I want to ask you about Jake Lever. Yep. Uh, linked to Melbourne, possibly. Yeah, well. look, they're as keen as anyone. Uh, there's a long list, but uh, if you want to rank them, and it, it could change, but I reckon Melbourne and the Bulldogs are, are battling this one right out, and, and the Pies are, are also there too. Do you think you'll go? Too. 
I just keep subscribing to the view that if you get to round 17 of a season and you haven't yet committed, there's something seriously going through your head. Right. What about uh, the Etihad Stadium yesterday? The Tigers and the Lions was yeah, interesting. The Lions are always going to be a cheeky chance, but this te- ended up being the most uh, fascinating part of the game. It was Robertson v Martin. It was, guys. It was a game within a game, and I was absorbed by it. Now, it's crude, and I think he that's, should answer for that that's no good. attempted cork there on uh, Martin. Again, as Martin has to answer to that. Now, whether it's serious enough to be rubbed out and therefore rule him out of the Brownlow medal, I reckon they'll probably err on the side of caution on it. The umpire got this wrong, and, and it took some heat out of this uh, contest within the contest order. Yeah, I think, uh, Gary, you had a good discussion on SCN this morning, the battering that players are taking and what the AFL does about it, because I think it's leading to moments and players just stepping over the line where players just getting belted in the back so often. Damien Harvick spoke about it as well. Yep. I think it's leading to moments yeah, where players right. can get suspended. I think you're right. And, and um, it's been spoken about at AFL level that they're going to stamp it out, yet it hasn't. So if you're going to make that stub, uh, statement public, then the umpires have got to back up AFL House and, and call a free kick early and it wouldn't be there. So I'm, I think you're right. I don't think Dustin's going to go for that. Lewis Young made his debut yesterday. MCG, the Bulldogs needed something. They found a way to win against Carlton. This debut, nine marks, eight intercept. Did you like it, Gaz? Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I mean, reading the ball in flight's great. Debuting on a half-back flank as opposed to Josh Battle debuting on a half-forward flank, a hell of a lot different. But you've still got to get the job done. What, what about this part of his game? Did you like this? Um, um, Kasbolt? No, but you know what that is, Damo? That's the youth of today. Yeah. That makes us sound old, I know. But Kasbolt misses the centre. He gets up in his grill. That's what the young blokes do. But uh, no Eastern Wood, and he filled yeah. the role beautifully. It was a really ugly game, Damo. Yeah. And I think why it's ugly is that those two sides are in the bottom three in this comp in scoring. The other side is Fremantle. Mm. So I think there's a real issue that the Bulldogs have to look at if they're a challenge this year. What do they do about their scoring? Is Cloak with Stringer out? Does he come back in or have they moved past him? Do they go with a small forward line? And Carlton, they have to evolve in time. I'm not sure if it happens for the rest of this year or next year, but they have to start going harder with their attack on the ball because right. they're all too much defensive. So at the moment. five games, uh, Brendan Bolton's won yeah. this year with Carlton. Yeah. They won yeah. seven last year. They've got a really tough next six yeah. weeks. That evolution you talk about yeah. is transitioning from ultra, ultra yeah. defensive, which is OK, you've got to have a, a building block, mm. but now you want to see them perhaps take on the game yeah. on a bit more. Well, they're always in games because they yeah. you know, chip the ball around mm. and it stops you from being scored against, but you, you can't win too many games playing that way. Well, you touched on uh, Nat Fife being a mm. move forward or urging Ross Lyon to move him forward. Uh, Paddy Dangerfield found himself in that position on the weekend on the on the back of an injury that he sustained early in the uh, quarter. We'll talk about the uh, specifics of that in a moment, but... It's really given them something to use come final time, I would have thought, him playing out of the square. I was there, Damo, and it was such a rare performance. You just don't see a midfielder go forward and have 11 shots at goal. Five goals, six, permanent forward. So he played like the old-fashioned forward did. Mm. And I know, uh, Gary, you spoke about how just threw out the whole defence of the Hawthorne Football Club. Clarko had to adjust at three-quarter time. But he's hit 32 goals for the season mm. as a midfielder. Yeah. Phenomenal. And that's the way, way he was going to take his game yeah. to another level, wasn't it? Being the reigning Brownlow medalist. He missed this one. This uh, to absolutely ice it at the end. Had he kicked straight, it could have been an eight, nine-goal game. Yeah. But the, the, the fascinating thing for me out of all of this was a man, as a result of injury, had mm. to stay yeah. at, at the player stay at home mm. forward role, which clubs won't do yeah. anymore. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Hawthorne had to re- mm. Hawthorne had to defend the forward, mm. which doesn't happen. I yeah. loved it. I loved it. What about the injury, though? I mean, you blokes sit with mm. Kane Corns on the Sunday Footy Show. Kane had this to say. I want to get your thoughts. Yeah, he does, I think Kane he does, thinks he was faking it. He well. does exaggerate injuries. Oh. Well, it goes back oh. to... Oh, hang, hang on, hang on. Now we're shooting bands. No, 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 I'm oh, not. fake it till you in, make it. In his time at Adelaide, his teammates had to sit him down and say, look, you, you do carry on a little bit oh. with your injuries. Oh, and, oh, and, and, he, and, he, and he does. So I'd be surprised if he missed with that injury yesterday. So, good. so, so Lord, you weren't there, but Kane Corns calls as he sees it. Yeah. The interesting thing out of that, he said he's... Adelaide teammates, like he Setting declared down. that his teammates had yeah. to talk to him. Look, I've, we've got to know mm. uh, Kane really well. He doesn't say things just for the sake of it, and his information would have been just that. That's why he's broadcast yeah. it. Uh, I don't expect it to be confirmed by anyone today, but that's what happens in the media. Once you say yeah. it, it does get shot down, but doesn't detract, he's, he's, not, doesn't, he's not one to just throw words no, around. And I, look, I take him in his word, but it doesn't detract from mm. what happened on mm. at MCG. It was one of the great yeah. performances yeah. of the year. Um, Daniel Wells, Lotto, uh, crucial to what Collingwood did against Gold Coast on the, on the weekend, and you look at the stats, and they are, Gaz, with the seven games he's played, they've won five, yep. and of the nine he's missed, they've won one. Yeah. But 
I would argue that that sums up Daniel Wells' career. I know that sounds really harsh, but now that the pressure's off, and, and now that Collingwood can't make the finals, we'll probably see him doing a bit more of this for the rest of the year. I don't agree with that, Damo, but what I do say, and we'll come back to something Gary also spoke at the start of the year, is he didn't come back fit enough. Yep. And that's what I'm more critical of. Mm. He could have been a star all year for them. Mm. I don't think it's about pressure being off personally. I think it's about his preparation, which doesn't allow him to play 22 games of footy. Yeah, and it's exacerbated by the fact he's gone to a, he was going to a yeah. new side. Yeah. So when you go to a new... I mean, we spoke about it a lot, I know, but it's, it, it's hurt him throughout the mm. course of the year. There's no question his footy ability. No one's ever questioned no one's that, ever doubted his, that. his ability to impact games. And would Nathan Buckley have had a better year if he'd been there all year? Mm. Absolutely, which makes it even more yep. important that he got it right. Hey, we watched St Kilda play one of the best halves of footy in recent memory against last Richmond. week yeah. against Richmond and then put in one of the worst games of their year. It was shocking, wasn't yeah. it? And, and I, I think you have to then just put a line through. Whatever hopes they had of, a, of an unlikely flag on the previous week, I think there was enough bad stuff in that performance on the weekend to just totally take them out of any thoughts mm. of any sort of fairy tale. I, I'd ask this without notice. Nick Revolt had a huge impact in that game against Richmond. Yeah. It was the Matty Revolt vision mm-hmm. game. It was up. The build-up was massive and he imposed himself yeah. magnificent. Had no impact. He tried to get defensive on to Hibbard, uh, sorry, to Hurley, didn't work. Two in a row, two, is it asking too much, and therefore, where are we at with Nick? Yeah, I just wonder whether he, he maybe can't play two games at Eddie Head Stadium in a row. I think it's a yeah. tough place to recover from. Didn't look himself after beating Rance the week before, but I'll ask with St Kilda. Uh, Ross had a poor game, Seb Ross, their best mm. midfielder. Oh, no, first two, time for a while. First time for a while. Revolt had a poor game. Jack Stephen was solid, but. Who else can you say is their staff power, staff yeah. factor? So yeah. I don't think they're good enough. Yeah. Um, that, they now may struggle to make the eight because they've got Sydney at the SCG. They're already out of the eight. Mm. So uh, it'd be another disappointing year if they missed. Has Joe Danaher overtaken Jeremy Haugaz and Lordo on this mark that he took on the, the weekend? The great, over colour. Two of the great high mark exponents here. Uh, Lordo <laughs> certainly did. He took the mark of the year. I was, I was in many marks of the year. <laughs> you know, on the <laughs> bottom. That is a beauty. That is a great mark. But I'm, I'm sticking with this man. Yep. In terms of perhaps height, athleticism, he's splitting hands a bit, but uh, they both make yeah. well, I'm yeah. with how too. Yeah, I'm with how. Just this yeah. extra launch there, uh, I think he's still in front. There we go. So you can split screen him here. Uh, to Joey on Carlisle. Carlisle's 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, yeah. Good grab, isn't it? But, but Donald uh, would be 6'5", wouldn't he? Yeah, no, no. Yep. We'll take him just. Hey, uh, time for our lift hard-hitting moments. We were unanimous on this. I think we might be unanimous on this. I'm going first to oh. Tom Hickey. Yep. This is what happens when you have a week off. You get these ones. So he's bowled over two Where Essendon players. Where is it, Where's the hard Look, there it is, back. <laughs> Belcho in the oh, Hurley. Yeah. There's the mark. And uh, got a cannonball. Got yeah. the mark. So he thought, this is the way going. I'm yeah. going to do it again. Yeah. But he bowls over Carlo. Oh. <laughs> All right, not my strongest. I reckon I've got you covered not this week, Because we're going to move from this game to the Collingwood game. And two Collingwood teammates in uh, Grundy and for Solo. Came together, oh. both had intent only on one thing, the ball, and concede. that was the outcome. I'll concede on that. Yeah, it's great to see them both get up and play out the games too. And these two warriors for their football clubs, Dangerfield and Podge, at a critical time in the game, they just crashed in. Only eyes for the ball. See it on the replay. Magnificent. Yeah, good hit, hit Damo. Uh, good hit, uh, Lord o, but I'm giving it to Damo. <laughs> uh, very nice to see you boys again. Thank uh, you all for joining us on Access All Areas. Have a good week. We'll catch you next Monday. Goodbye.